Okay. Hi, my name is Emily Elliott, and I'm a reporter with East Lansing Info. I've been covering school board related topics since early April. This morning, I have with me Dr. Jane Turner, a local pediatrician and former trustee on the school board. And today we have with us Nicole Martin, who's running for re-election for the school board. And so the first question we have for you today, Nicole, is on the school board, you'll have to deal with a major public health crisis. Talk about how you would like to continue developing plans for um, handling this and how you view your position as a member of the board in coping with the public health crisis. Yeah, so it's, um, when you find yourself in a global pandemic as a school board member, you find that there are not a lot of people you can pass um, bounce previous ideas off of um, because no one's ever experienced this as a board member before, right? So we're all kind of navigating this across the world um, in, in ways in which we've never, we don't have any ideas to bounce off of people who've experienced it before. So um, I think that there has been an insurmountable amount of time behind the scenes that has gone into the decisions that have been made. Um, I very much value the superintendent's direction to listen to local health authorities, doctors, um, work collaboratively with East Lansing and MSU. Um, I'm thankful for the work uh, group teams that she's put together for the return to school. I do serve on the elementary um, uh, board, the committee for the return to school and the information that is passed through and considered and talked about is is insurmountable it is overwhelming at times um it feels like an absolute diff you know some days i'm an absolute defeatist and like how are we ever going to do this and luckily i've been thankful to wake up every morning and have a kind of be renewed and how okay what are the things we can address what are the things that are outstanding what do we need more information on um and i think you know, running for re-election puts me in a position where um, I have some of the background that's gone into the decisions that have been made. Transition every two years on our board always has uh, some rollback, right? There's always some regression on the school board when you have a transition because you aren't in an ebb and flow. And so I think that I can offer that up um, as an incumbent to provide a lot of that background and historical information along with the colleagues who are not up for re-election um, to address those concerns that, quite frankly, we have no idea how long we're going to be making decisions that are a result of this pandemic. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's good to hear your perspective as someone who's been right in the thick of it. <laughs> yeah. So the next question um, is on a little different theme, but something that won't be new to you. The district has identified equity and inclusion as an important goal and has pursued this by developing a new handbook and policies, which with which you are familiar, I'm sure, mm -hmm. and is making plans to make the faculty better represent the diversity of the student body. Talk about this issue a little bit for us. Yeah, so again, my job as a school board member is to help um, kind of set goals based on what our district mission is. And uh, in the last four years, we've really come a long way in the collaboration that takes place um, to kind of set those goals. And so when we say we want every child, every student, global world citizens, you know, um, we really have taken that to heart. And in addressing the goals that we set for the district, for the superintendent, that she sets for her administration and, and downhill, um, everything has surrounded this idea of equity and inclusion. And it's not about being, um, it's not about equality. It's about making sure that every student, every teacher has the resources that they need in order to achieve the same success. And um, I found out a lot over the course of the summer and once the global pandemic started with the murder of George Floyd, that I have a lot of learning to do and I have a bigger voice to press um, in, this, in this situation and as a school board member to address the inequities that we have, the sy systemic issues that we have with um, you know, student suspensions and expulsions. I, I'm thankful 
that we don't have those right now. Like we're not looking at expense, at, at, um, suspensions and expulsions, but now what we're looking at is, okay, what needs do people have? Are their kids online? If they're not online, who's contacting the child? Who's trying to have those conversations about the importance of being online or being engaged um, on a regular basis? So I think the, the issue, the way in which we identify equity resources and inclusion resources looks different now, but it doesn't change as a result of this pandemic. Um, I also would say that due to the collaboration, I feel like the goals and the, the path in which the district is currently, currently taking is set up in a much more efficient way. Um, we tend in the past to have addressed issues when they come to us. You know, there's a negative issue that happened around equity. So now let's deal with it. And I feel like as a school board member, I've really had the opportunity to get involved with the superintendent and with my other trustees about how do we address this now before it's an issue or how do we address this um, long term so that we are addressing this systemically instead of in an, as an isolated issue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so our next question for you is how do you understand the role of a trustee in relationship to the district administration? What do you see as your chief responsibilities as um, a trustee? Yeah, this, this one is a great question. Um, and one I'm very thankful for that uh, MASB previously, you know, provided trainings and things like that to help with that. Um, we all have our own backgrounds and our own perspectives, but really there are, you know, about six, seven goals that we should be looking at. You know, the first is goal setting. How do, how do setting goals for the superintendent and, and what she does and how she facilitates things, not to the microcosm, right, level. Uh, not, we're not micromanaging, but how can we set overarching goals for success within our district? The second is staffing, you know, um, we, I also had the opportunity right when I came in to be a part of um, a new form of contract negotiations, which looked very more, much more collaborative in nature than I think it had in the past. I wasn't there in the past, so I can't say that. But from past board members, I hear that the experience was much more collaborative as opposed to we want this, they want that, and this kind of back and forth. It, it, it doesn't look like that. It doesn't mean that everybody gets what they want. Um, and we have to have those hard conversations, but we have to adopt policies to outline salary benefits and support, you know, professional development of teachers. Um, and then what, what mechanism we are using for employee evaluations, but we don't do employee evaluations. Um, I had the privilege to be on policy for three of my four years uh, as a former state employee and a contractor with the state now. Policy is my life. Um, I, I am in policy all the time. I'm very proud of establishing and helping to work collaboratively with Mental Health Advisory Committee about the, um, to form and have adapted the suicide awareness and prevention. Um, I think prior, you know, it was one of the things that I ran on before was addressing mental health. It's still a very huge concern of mine, um, but getting the awareness and a policy in place to help support staff and the decisions that they're making and the programs that they're bringing in are huge. Um, and not just as an awareness piece, but as a prevention piece, right? Like we can be talking about this, but we don't, again, need to be talking about it after somebody has died by suicide. We need to be talking about the fact that depression is common. And I am a person who has anxiety and I have had phases in my life where I have been extremely depressed and you know, needed medical assistance, or I, you know, I needed to see a doctor, I needed to see a mental health therapist. It's really important um, to support not only kids, but teachers and administrators um, to have policies that, that help address those issues because they're real and kids can't find out and parents can't find out and teachers can't find out in the midst of it. They need to know ongoing and that it, it changes all the time, right? So I think policy is probably where you're going to be the most passionate um, because I think there's been a real opportunity to kind of question the intentionality of policies and who, when we're thinking about the policy, who is really being supported by the policy? Who is it oppressing as we make decisions about our words 
and is the intent of what we're trying to do and the words we're using it to support it, do they really connect together? Um, so I've been really proud of the work that, that's happened on policy. Um, you know, we, des we do the, the designating of, of the superintendent and her evaluation, his or her evaluation, but Dory's evaluation right now. Um, and that's been collaborative in nature as well, but it's also, there are also days that I am not um, gonna sugarcoat the directions that we've gone or um, the way in which situations have been handled. Um, but ultimately, um, the evaluation should be reflective of the work that we as board members set. So you would like to have a positive evaluation, um, not because of sugarcoating, not because of a lack of transparency, um, but because you want to set her up to be successful. Um, facilities, facilities is a hard one. I'm the chair of facilities. Um, and so typically you would talk about what the district needs and you would talk up, you would communicate that with the district, but the focus why the majority of my time on the board has been around the bonds. And so Dory gives those, assess, you know, she gives those updates. Um, what I will say is that, you know, we've talked about, you know, people think about things on a large scale like facilities, um, stadiums and courts and, you know, things like that. But we also um, have had a lot of oversight in potholes and ADA compliance and, you know, trying to figure out better traffic ways uh, for busing loops with children who are walking and things like that. So facilities is a big portion of what we do. And I tend to know a little bit more about that because I'm the chair of that. We oversee the budget. Um, the budget is, is done by, you know, the director of finance and the superintendent. And my role is to ask questions and to make sure that funding sources are in line with the priorities we have for the district. Um, but my job is, is not to say this money goes here and this money goes there and so on and so forth. So the bulk of that work really truly does go to our director of finance and to Dory, but I do ask questions. I tend to ask questions offline so that I can make sure I know ahead of time what I'm, what I'm voting for, what I'm supporting, um, and then ask for clarifying questions. I don't, if you've ever seen an interview with me or me on a school board, I tend to ask clarifying questions that I usually know the answer to already. But I think it's important for people to know the answer because it's really hard when you're not in the thick of all of it to assume that we've got all the information at hand. Um, and then lastly is curriculum. Um, curriculum in the sense that we approve recommended curriculum. I have seen over the years that we have struggled because the focus on curriculum has been on what do we need to do to prepare kids for assessments. And in that realm, we kind of lost our way in terms of things that are important and valuable that you're not going to find on those assessments. And I think that, um, you know, President Graham has done a really good job of improving um, and having, asking those, you know, questions of diversity, equitable questions. How are we going to get these resources? Who is going to have them? What kinds of pictures and conversations are they having? What will they develop in the classroom? And so curriculum is really, really important, but it, it really comes down to empowering teachers, curriculum heads um, to bring that diverse uh, information forward to be approved. And it's our role to question it if it does not meet those, those types of standards that we need to have in order for kids to be successful and knowledgeable. Thank you, thank you. Emily, how much time do we have? We have two minutes and 15 seconds. So we have a little bit of time. The next, the next question, I think you can answer very quickly since it's really geared towards new board members and that's how to get up to speed, learning new <laughs> rules, policies, protocols. And you already commented on the MASB, but yeah. just, I think you can answer that probably in about 20 seconds. Absolutely. The, MA, the MASB, Michigan Association of School Boards, is a great place. I know that they're in the process and maybe even have flipped over some of their um, learning opportunities to be online now instead of in person. Um, but I tag along, get to know somebody, meet over Zoom for coffee, um, have a conversation. I came in, you said 20 seconds. Um, I came in at a time where our superintendent switched over my first meeting. And I came in at a time 
um, where there was a lot of angst about what was going on and how people were communicating on the board. And, and we just don't have that anymore. So reach out to a board member, have a cup of coffee, talk about things, catch yourself up to speed um, and see how you can jump in. Thank you. Thank you. We have 57 seconds left. So I don't know if you want to give any closing comments. Yeah, I think, I think just in closing, you know, everything that I do is intentional. I have, I, I work in policy, I work in child welfare. And so everything that I do and, and produce um, is forward facing. I want it to help whoever it is that I am working to help. And I don't see my role on the school district any differently. Every decision I make has a consequence. Sometimes it's positive. Uh, hopefully it's positive. Sometimes it's, it's not positive for all and you can't please everybody. But it's my continued hope that people will see the work that I've done and the way that I will fight for people, um, teachers, students, and parents, um, and, and want that type of leader to continue on the school board. Well, thank you very much. Right. This is very helpful to get a good picture of what you've been doing and, and how it's been. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.